Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the interactions between monetary policy and fiscal policy. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now when it comes to monetary policy and fiscal policy, they both move the economy around. That means they can work together to achieve the goals of full employment, stable prices, and economic growth, but they can also work as opposing forces towards the economy as well. Now when it comes to monetary policy, it is going to impact the ASAD model, which means we see changes in the price level, real output, and unemployment as a result of changes in monetary policy. But we also see in the money market, if we have scarce reserves, or the reserves market when we have ample reserves, changes in the interest rates, which means we're going to see impacts on investment and economic growth. And when it comes to fiscal policy, we're going to have similar impacts. It also is going to impact the ASAD model. And since fiscal policy involves taxes and government spending, we're going to see impacts in the loanable funds market as well. And the change in the national debt that results from fiscal policy is going to impact interest rates, which impacts investment, and with that, economic growth. So first, let's take a look at the impact of expansionary monetary policy and expansionary fiscal policy. In the ASAD model, the monetary policy is going to give us a rightward shift of that aggregate demand curve. And the expansionary fiscal policy is also going to give us a rightward shift of that aggregate demand curve. Both of those shifts are going to result in higher price levels and higher real output. And that means that the net effect of expansionary monetary and fiscal policy on the ASAD model means we're going to have a rightward shift of that aggregate demand curve we're going to see an increase in the price level, an increase in real GDP, and a decrease in unemployment, or an increase in employment. When it comes to interest rates, however, we are going to see some difference. In the money market, expansionary monetary policy, if we have scarce reserves, is going to result in a lower interest rate. And if we have an ample reserve system in the reserves market graph, we're also going to see a lower interest rate. But that expansionary fiscal policy is going to result in more national debt, which means we're going to see an increase in the demand or decrease in the supply of loanable funds. And that means the combination of these two actions will result in both a decrease in interest rates and an increase in interest rates. As a result, the net impact on interest rates is going to be indeterminate. As we don't know which of these fiscal policy or monetary policy actions is going to be more strong. And since interest rates are indeterminate, the impact on gross investment will be indeterminate. And as a result, economic growth, or the change in the economic growth rate, will be indeterminate as well. If we have the opposite and both monetary policy and fiscal policy are contractionary, in the ASAD model, we're going to see a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve with that monetary policy and a leftward shift with the fiscal policy. Both of those are going to result in a lower price level and lower amount of real output. That means we're going to see aggregate demand definitely move to the left, definitely see the price level decrease. They have now successfully fought inflation together and we're going to see real GDP decrease, which means we have higher unemployment or lower employment. In regards to the impact on interest rates, we will see a decrease in the money supply if we have scarce reserves or an increase in the interest on reserves or potentially the administered rates in the reserve market graph. In the loanable funds market, we're going to see a decrease in the demand for loanable funds or increase in the supply as the government doesn't have to borrow as much money because it has increased taxes or decreased spending. And that means the monetary policy is going to result in an increase in the interest rate while we're going to see a decrease in the interest rate for fiscal policy. That net impact means that all of these are once again going to be indeterminate. We can't tell what's going to happen to the interest rate, gross investment, or the economic growth rate. So when both monetary and fiscal policy go together, as far as both being contractionary or both being expansionary, we're going to see them working together in regards to real output and the price level, but they will be working in opposing directions in regards to the interest rate. Next, let's take a look at contractionary monetary policy and expansionary fiscal policy. On that ASAD model, we're going to see the contractionary monetary policy decrease the aggregate demand curve. The expansionary fiscal policy, though, is going to increase the aggregate demand curve. And since both of those actions are opposing forces in the ASAD model, that means that the shift of the aggregate demand curve is going to be indeterminate. As a result, the price level will now be indeterminate and 
the real output and unemployment will both be indeterminate. But when it comes to interest rates, if we have ample reserves, then we're going to see an increase in the interest rate in the reserve market graph. If we have a scarce reserve system, we will see a leftward shift of the money supply resulting in a higher interest rate. And in the loanable funds market, we're going to see an increase in the demand for loanable funds or a decrease in the supply of loanable funds. And that means in both markets, we are actually going to see an increase in the interest rate. And so in regards to interest rates, the monetary and fiscal policy are working together here. Both interest rates have increased. That means we're definitely going to see a decrease in gross investment and we're going to see a decrease in the economic growth rate. If we have expansionary monetary policy and contractionary fiscal policy in the ASAD model, we're going to have both a decrease in aggregate demand and an increase in aggregate demand. Again, it's going both directions. We aren't going to know the impact on real output or the price level. So those opposing forces in the ASAD model mean that aggregate demand is indeterminate, as is the price level and real GDP along with unemployment. But in regards to interest rates, we're going to see a rightward shift of the money supply, or if we have ample reserves, we're going to at least see a downward shift of the lower end of that demand curve, again, resulting in a lower interest rate or the policy rate here. And in the loanable funds market, the contractionary fiscal policy means less national debt. That's going to decrease the demand for loanable funds or increase the supply. And so for both monetary and fiscal policy, we see a lower interest rate. And so the interest rates are definitely going to decrease. That means we're going to definitely see an increase in gross investment and an increase in the economic growth rate. So again, while they are opposing forces in the ASAD model, here they are actually working together in regards to the interest rate, gross investment, and economic growth. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about the interactions between monetary policy and fiscal policy. They can work together, or opposed. If you want to practice this a little more, head over to reviewecon.com and play the monetary policy, fiscal policy sorting game. And if you still need more help after that, make sure you pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.